Emotions are prominent within the world of art. Sorrow can drive artists to paint their anguish. Rage can fuel hatred, leading to art that's disturbing and terrifying. Different forms of emotions can lead to infinitely different types of art. But joy, joy can inspire artists to craft a beautiful world full of hope. Happiness is undoubtedly one of the most vital parts of art as it inspires those of a better world. I believe it was Robert Schumann who stated, to send light into the darkness of men's hearts, such is the duty of the artist. Art is a flash of light that brightens the dark, sad corners of the world. Art is made for hope. Art was made from joy, and art was created to inspire the world and to cheer the masses. Such work that I believe further proves the joy in art is Spring by Lawrence Alma Tadma, which I viewed in the Getty Museum, and Portrait of Albert Candonver by Pierre Auguste Renoir, which I also viewed in the Getty Museum. We will discuss Spring by Lawrence Alma Tedma first, as his work contains a multitude of details relating to joy. Sir Lawrence Alma Tedma was born on January 8, 1836, in Dondrup, north of the Netherlands. As a young child, his family raised him to be a lawyer, but after getting sick, they let him spend his days doing what brought him joy. Lawrence Alma found joy in painting, and after his illness passed, he decided to become an artist. He trained his craft at the Royal Academy of Antwerp and decided to settle down in London. Sir Lawrence Alma Tedma was a classical subject painter who was renowned for his artworks of the Roman Empire. Although he was one of the most famous painters of his time, most of his work faded into the background after his death in June 25, 1912. Within the website, Art Short List, it states, the artist has been the target of many critics, most of whom consider that he was not spiritual enough and that his work was meaningless. His art was rediscovered in 1960 and was finally brought back and made important. As we look into spring created in 1894, we see a lively celebration where women, children, and musicians parade around with brightly colored flowers. The specific colors on the flowers portray feelings of comfort and optimism as they are warm colors. These flowers draw the eyes of the viewers into the lower crowd as well as high into the corners of the painting. Although the frame itself is vertical, looking closely at the painting shows many vertical lines to make the viewer look all around the artwork. One of which are two elongated poles that reach far up into the painting and take control of the center. One pole blocks the view of those who look like royalty as they wave down at the crowd. This grabs the attention of those looking high into the painting and brings their views back down to the celebration below, reminding the viewers that the main focus of the painting is the joyous celebration. The sunlight hits almost every speck of the painting, only leaving a dark tunnel where those inside must keep moving forward. Only then will they be able to bask in the glory of the light and celebrate with the others. Tadme put so much of his own joy when creating this painting that he even stated, If you want to know what those Greeks and Romans looked like, come to me. I can show not only what I think, but what I know. Thus proving how Tadme only sees the Roman celebration as a joyful place that does not differ from his own artwork. Pierre-Auguste Noir was born February 25, 1841, in Limoges, in southwest France, where he began working as a painter on porcelain. Learning art at such an early age gave Renoir a sense of satisfaction, and he decided to become an artist. He later moved to Paris, joining the studio of a fashionable painter, Charles Guilaire, around 1861. Renard was one of the leading painters in the Impressionist movement, which helped him evolve his craft of broken brush strokes and bold color combinations. Renard was infatuated with paintings well into his elderly life. It is said that after Renard got terrible arthritis, he would beg his wife to wrap a brush betwixt his fingers so that he may continue to paint. Paris Auguste Noir passed on December 3, 1919, leaving behind thousands of artworks all of which seemed to be about pleasurable occasions. Pierre Auguste Noir once stated, If painting were not a pleasure to me, I should certainly not do it. Pierre Auguste Noir's work 
portrait of Albert Candover, created on September 9, 1881, displays an orchestral composer, Albert Candere, a wealthy, well-groomed man holding a cigar. The work contains bright, bold colors that contrast the opposite sides of the paintings. Light seems to be disappearing to the left, but the only thing that concerns Albert Condé is the viewer. Looking closely into the art piece, there are signs of Renoir's broken brushwork that causes everything in the background to seem a tad hazy, but this only further emphasizes Don Ver's detailed face staring back at the viewer. Many lines left of Candover seem to mix together and fuse in a dark haze, while the right side of the painting shows more clear lines. Candover seems to be leaning towards the light, as if to say that by moving into the light, problems seem clear and less troubling. His well-groomed mustache creates a sort of smile, and his body position suggests that he is intrigued by the viewer. He presents himself as a person who is waiting to hear you speak, as a person who is happy that you are here. Both Paris Auguste Renard and Sir Lawrence Alma Tedma shared an early love of art. They also shared a similar perspective of art, with joy leading them to paint. These two paintings differ on many levels as one depicts many while the other depicts one, but the main theme of both paintings is joy. Joy is the reason that both these paintings even exist. Tedma wanted to bring to light the passion and happiness within Imperial Roman celebrations. Depicting a beautiful ceremony that brought joy to those who witnessed his painting, I believe that this masterpiece perfectly captures joy in its purest form, surrounded by smiles, the bright accepting colors of the flowers, and a warm light that emphasizes the feeling of safety. While Augustus was paid to paint Albert Candover, he only drew what made him happy. In doing so, Augustus inputted his joy and created a welcoming image of Candover that he may not have even intended. We know that Augustus has done this with other of his works as we see in Paris Augustus Renard biography in details which states, his work is characterized by a richness of feeling and a warmth of response to the world and to the people in it. Effectively proving, Renoir's work is often formed with joy. I believe that this painting depicts an example of happiness from a friend, family member, or loved one. His welcoming features are not only inviting, but also warm, as if he is someone you haven't seen in a long time, but are glad to see again. Both artworks depict the light as joy and the darkness as sadness. As one moves through life in a dark world, their problems stop them from celebrating and unraveling their own problems. If the person moves to the light, quotation mark, optimistic mindset, quotation mark, it would help them reveal the problems that they are facing and bring their spirits back up. These two artworks also share bright, bold colors that convey a scene of relaxation. In the end, these artists gain their artistic inspiration from joy and will deliver joy through their artworks.